Hello, thank you for joining me. This is our fourth video in our series uh, creating an in-context assembly or a top-down uh, assembly approach, top-down modeling approach using an assembly. Uh, and in this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to finish up our, our model, our simple model that we've been working on, which is a handgun, and uh, show you some options that are associated with maybe putting these elements into a, uh, another assembly. Because ultimately, the desire here is uh, to create an assembly where these parts can actually move, and this is a re uh, request from one of my students. So he wants to put in all the components of, uh, of his gun, but he also wants to make sure that all the components fit together, which is the reason why we put this in context assembly together to begin with. So we put the um, we put everything together, and uh, there's relationships between the two parts that we created, both uh, the revolver barrel and uh, the gun base. And um, uh, what we did is we created a static assembly. We really can't move. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the parts from the assembly and put it into another assembly that does allow it to have the motion. That's uh, the ultimate goal of this thing, so to be able to put all these parts together, knowing these parts are going to fit. And uh, using this main base assembly, this in-context assembly, uh, in order to drive those parts. Okay. So what we've done in the interim is I added a, added a couple things, both to the revolver barrel and to the handle. We want to bore you with the details of what we did here. But I do want to show you what we uh, what actually happened with this. I renamed the, the barrel hole to barrel hole. We didn't have that name before. And then we added a, a revolver barrel axle. And also uh, opened this up uh, in the part level and then resaved that. Yeah, the very same way that we did with the revolver barrel. Still maintaining the connection with the assembly itself, but uh, now a separate part that we can open up and make modifications to. So just to show you how that works, we'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and open up our handle or our gun uh, base. Now let's go ahead and uh, make an addition to this. We're going to put some fillets on top and then we're going to make a cut in here and show you how that works. So with the sketch, maybe a three-point axis, or we can go to uh, offset entities, maybe click on that edge, and uh, maybe 0.2 inches. Reverse the direction. We'll put it on the inside. Looks good to me. A couple additional lines in here. Maybe with that, maybe we can take this line and that edge. Make those collinear with each other. And now, yeah, that looks okay. So let's go to Features, Extrude Cut. We'll do a through wall on that one. Oops, wrong section there. And we'll call that a trigger hole. Or a trigger cut would be better, I think. Okay, so you notice that everything on this thing, except for a revolver, barrel, axle, and a trigger cut, are within the context of the assembly. These are only within the context of the, uh, the, of the part itself. So there is a difference there. When you see the symbol, you know, with the dash and then uh, the greater than sign, or you might see a question mark. Question mark means that you've broken that association with your assembly. You need to re-establish re that by reopening up your parts, maybe re-establishing those, uh, those uh, definitions. But uh, that's what those symbols mean. So I think that's enough there. I also put together uh, an axle right down the middle of this thing. Of course, the axle is associated with uh, with um, with the origin, which is going to be the same in the revolver barrel as it is with the gun base here. And then we're going to put these together into an assembly. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing up here with the fillets, put some fillets in on top, just so you can see what that looks like. And again, just before we leave this part, kind of makes the gun look a little bit more realistic, add some uh, elements in there that uh, are a little bit more uh, true to the gun we're trying to model itself. And then we'll call that a barrel fillet. Okay, again, knowing context uh, relationship down here, it's all done within the part level. So, let's go ahead and save that in, the, in uh, the master assembly or in context assembly. Everything updates. Everything's fine. So, let's start a new assembly. Use your template file for that if you like. We don't want to necessarily put in, uh, and it's the only part that's open right now is that uh, is the assembly itself. We don't want to do that. But let's go ahead and open up the two parts that we want to put in. We want to make the, the handle, which I really should call the, the gun base since that's what I've been calling it. We want to make sure that's uh, locked to the origin. So we'll just do the green check mark on that, and let's uh, add, a, add a part. Now it does show that it's an in-context relationship, not necessarily with this, with this uh, assembly, but there is an in-context relationship somewhere, and that in-context relationship is still maintained because we have the other assembly open. So let's go insert component, existing part and assembly. Again, we're going to browse when we pin our revolver barrel. And we're just going to drop that in on the side. 
and we're going to give that the ability to be able to rotate. So let's go to view, temporary axes, and start making our connections in here. And go to assembly and go to mate. Bang. Let's click on this face. In this face, I know there's uh, there's uh, some clearance in there, and I believe that distance is uh, uh, 0 0.018. There we have it. Now the big difference. Oops. Let's go ahead and correct that one. Right click. Because we have a kind of a clearance uh, fit in there. Let's go ahead and. Oh, not that one. We don't want to flip that necessarily. Let's flip that back. But let's go ahead and uh, flip the dimension instead so it puts us on the other side. So we know we have a, um, a clearance in there without a value. We don't have a, an interference fit. Yeah, so that looks good. The advantage of this assembly is now we can put motion into it we can begin to uh, use this as a regular assembly. So if you think about the two assemblies that we made, the in-context assembly is static, we're just using it to create parts, and there's relationships between uh, the different parts, and they're all related to the uh, design sketches that we put together in the, into the assembly, and all the parts are derived uh, from that uh, assembly are driving all the, all the parts. All the sketches from that assembly are driving all the parts that uh, follow it. Okay, one more thing I want to show you. While we still have the other assembly open, we can make additions and changes to this assembly. We go to our right sketch, and we're going to exaggerate this just to make it look a little bit better. Maybe if we made that 2 inches instead of 1.7 inches, everything else kind of stretches behind that. And what we did is we changed the barrel size to be 2 inches. It used to be uh, 1.7 inches before. We'll go ahead and rebuild. Rebuild the assembly, so now you can see the barrel is a lot longer in this, uh, in this assembly, but it, in the other assembly too, the assembly that allows for uh, movement, it too should be longer here too. So if we go to evaluate, let's go to the measure tool, let's click in this face, then click in the back face of our, our revolver barrel, it should say 2 inches, which it does. So again, all these modifications you can make or can be done on the assembly level and the in context assembly and uh, it'll drive all the parts associated with uh, all the parts associated with that assembly as well as the other assembly that we put together. So, one last bit of demonstration. Let's make that 1.5 instead of 1.45. Notice that this sketch changes. We still have our clearance fit in here. So this goes up a little bit. The, the, the body of the gun is going to increase a little bit. No errors. We still have our clearance up here on top. As you can see. And if we go back to our other assembly, yes, we want to see that. And uh, it fits there too. It's a real fast and easy way to make updates. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I want to show you for in-context assemblies. So have fun with that, and we will see you in other videos.